Hey what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Ahsoka Episode 7 has released and once again we have had a development in a strangely interesting relationship between Balin and Shin. In a surprising twist of events, Balin has officially released Shin to follow her own path and join the Empire to help Thrawn with his cause. What's rather bizarre about this though is that heretofore we had been laboring under the assumption that Balin's stream of power extended to both him and Shin and that they were going to start something together with the power that Balin seeks on Peridia. But instead, it seems that Balin has changed his mind about his apprentice and now has decided to let her go. This seems like a rather sudden change, but one that we predicted after episode 6. In that one, we had made the guess that Balin actually doesn't trust Shin at all, which was why he was keeping the secret of the power he sought from her, refusing to divulge any information about what they were after besides a few vague speeches. But now we have discovered that Balin may in fact fear his apprentice, or not trust her whatsoever. We have much to discuss today my friends, so let's go ahead and open the holocron. The biggest thing that stands out to me is how Balin chose to raise and train Shin versus how she actually turned out. All throughout the early episodes of Ahsoka, we were learning about these dark Jedi. We were constantly though reminded of the fact of how Balin had actually trained her in the Jedi way, but with a few important twists. Balin went forward with the tradition of a Padawan braid, instructed her to build a lightsaber in the Jedi fashion, and even mentioned how much he appreciated the structure of the Jedi Order despite its weaknesses. All in all, he wanted to create a Jedi without the proven weaknesses of the Jedi that came before. As he mentioned, he loved the idea of the Jedi Order, but not the weakness that persisted. Balin truly believes in the structure of the Jedi, but with the power of the dark side. Unfortunately, it seems that he has failed. All of that structure and discipline seems a bit lost on Shin, who is only concerned with power. Far too many of her dark tendencies have come out in the open, and now Balin has reevaluated the nature of their path moving forward. Shin's concern with power can be seen as soon as Balin mentions the power beyond her wildest dreams. Up till this point, Shin had been completely obedient and disciplined under her master, carrying out his orders and accepting his instruction. However, after he reveals what they're after on Peridia, we notice small changes in Shin. She starts questioning Balin, she gloats over Sabine about her having no power, and she has to be ordered several times by Balin to stop force choking Sabine instead of obeying him upon command. And that's not even to mention her battle lust. You can see the regret and sorrow that fills Balin's face when he unclips his lightsaber to face Ahsoka. The first time that they faced off, Balin simply acknowledges their duel as inevitable, and at the end, he tells Ahsoka that it didn't have to end this way. Balin doesn't want the fight, but Shin does. She relishes in the opportunity to hunt down prey like an animal. Shin moves with a swiftness of a predator and has a hunger in her eyes that can only be satiated with blood and power. Shin enjoys the feeling of dominating someone with the force and is visibly insulted when Ahsoka is able to make her own and defeat Shin without any weapons in her possession. Not to mention her dangerous ambition, which is a strong conveyor of the dark side itself. While Balin seems to teach the dark side, he doesn't promote the ways of the Sith which are ambition and domination. All of this is to say, Shin's mind is on her own strength, which is where her goals and the goals of Balin misalign. Shin is becoming obsessed with power, and Balin now sees that. He's been playing his cards close to his chest this whole time, and now realizes that the future he seeks does not have Shin in it, not while she's like this. Balin wanted her to be a Jedi without weakness, but instead, she fell too far to the dark and created a monster. He leaves her only with the final words, eagerness for victory will always bring defeat, hoping that somewhere in her, she will find the discipline to heed Balin's instruction and become wise and powerful in a way that he wanted her to be. But unfortunately, she cannot share in the power that he now seeks alone, and refuses to admit her to a power he believes she cannot handle. Balin despised how Anakin turned out, and is already under the presumption that by virtue of being his Padawan, Ahsoka is destined to destroy. Just as her master did, Balin cares not for wanton destruction or following in the footsteps of these famous dark side decimators. Balin claims to want something more. However, perhaps with Balin's incredible abilities and foresight, he is seen and worries about the future where Shin will simply become everything that he has tried to fix. This I believe is reason number one. Everything we have talked about up until this point has to do with Balin not being willing to inflict another Vader on the galaxy, someone that wields the dark side with a furious rage. And this is why he dismisses Shin. 
it has not gone far enough to where he must destroy Shin himself, but it is definitely time for them to split for the greater good. Of course, that greater good isn't exactly about the galaxy or the innocents in it, but rather the greater good of what Balin seeks. Balin believes there is great power on Peridia, one that eclipses that of the Empire or even the dark side. The political and militaristic power granted by the Empire and by Thrawn is clearly of little and no interest to Balin. Shin seems alright with it though, but clearly Balin is thinking larger. Balin seems to consider himself a holy warrior, a paladin who guards the secret of power and desires to keep it close so that he can use it to create a new beginning. What this means in its entirety is unclear, but the amount of fear that shows in his eyes in this episode, especially when he is close to this power, but as roadblocks of both Ahsoka and Shin, he is even willing to completely abandon his mission in order to get a head start on his journey, leaving the entire assault on Sabine and Ezra squarely on the shoulders of his apprentice. Either he was too confident in Shin's abilities to be able to defeat the three of them, or simply that he did not care about the outcome. Either way, he was ready to ditch this path and go in his own way, the way of the power on Peridia. Balin is now on his own, going off to find and locate this mysterious power, whether that be the ancient teachings of the Dark Zepho, the very beginning, and potentially the first ever individual to embrace the dark side of the Force in the Zepho Kujet. Or perhaps it is something else, something dark such as Abeloth, trapped in another galaxy by the ones of Mortis, calling out to Balin and asking him to accept her. One thing is extremely important though, Balin needs the perfect balance in the Force, something that we previously have been referring to as false balance. He sees it go both ways. The Jedi have inherent weakness, and the ambition of the dark side and the Sith is too just as corrosive, just as damaging to the ultimate goal that Balin serves, the power on Peridia that he has resigned himself to. In Balin and Shin, one will eventually seek to find the moon and the other the sun. Different paths, different goals, just like in the Norse mythology tale. Skull chases the sun, Hades chases the moon. Their path divergence was inevitable. But what does it really mean? In the Norse legend, it is said that on the day of Ragnarok, the two wolves will devour the sun and the moon, bathing the heavens in darkness and causing the end of all celestial bodies, the end of the cosmos. This terrifying idea of an apocalypse could give us an idea of what is to be expected at the end of Balin's journey. Is it Kujet the Zepho, or is it Abeloth, bringer of chaos? Or perhaps it's something else entirely something that ties the destinies of both Balin and Shin to a potential cataclysmic event. At this moment, we cannot know. We can only watch and guess. But of course, my friends, we want to know your opinion as well. Why do you think Balin was so quick to cast aside Shin in her moment of imbalance? Does he view the light side of the Force being too strong within someone and the dark side as both being equal threats? What version of the Force does Balin serve? And what master does he seek on Peridia? We will have more videos theorizing and explaining the various episodes of Ahsoka and the outcome of Balin and Shin's story. But as always, my friends, thank you so much for visiting our channel. And as always, may the Force be with you.